All right, here's a quick idea that I call state-dependent memory. I'm not sure if this is the actual name for this. This is what I've called it. Uh, this idea will help you get out of lows, right? So if you're somebody who gets really hit aggressively with lows or when you're in lows, you know, it's hard for you to get back out of them or when you're in lows, you kind of just tend to fucking self-destruct and destroy everything around you, right? Uh, this is going to be an idea that will definitely help you out. So state-dependent memory. So before we get into the actual idea, you have to learn kind of why this is helpful. The, your, the, the, when you use state-dependent memory is when you're in a fucking low, right? When shit is not going your way, when you feel like crap, basically in your mind, everything is going to feel like, you know, everything you want to do is basically working uphill. Nothing's going to succeed. You have no confidence. It feels like everything is kind of collapsing in, right? And this is, you'll waver between this either daily or weekly or whatever, right? Because your body goes in energetic waves. Now, in a day's time, your energy is going to go like this. Okay, your energy is going to go like this. Now, you're also going to have your mood usually be affected by these waves. So when you have high energy, you're going to be happy. Things are going to feel certain. Uh, you know, fucking you, you think things are going to work out for you. You're going to be very social, things like that. Right. When you're in a low, you're not going to, want to talk to anybody. Right. You, every, your mind thinks everything's going to fail. It just gets very dark and cloudy. Right now. You can make an argument that this is actually due to calories. So you, you could just be fucking hungry, which is the hilarious part about it, right? Because I think people don't realize how much food actually makes you feel better, right? I see people doing the PD, the PEAT diet, right? And I think what's happening is a lot of people are misattributing certain foods and nutritional ingredients to actually just eating more fucking food. Because if you eat more fucking food, you're going to feel better and you're going to have more energy because your brain's like, oh, man, we got the calories to do this, right? And then kind of a side tangent, the way your brain conceptualizes reality, if you are cutting weight and you're like, oh, man, I, I can't eat that much food, your brain isn't stupid. It knows that you think that there's not going to be enough food or it knows you're going to cut off supply. So it's going to cut your energy down over here, right? When you're peating or when you're doing whatever the fuck you're doing to eat a bunch of food... In your mind, you're like, oh, I can eat everything. I'm abundant with food, okay? Now, your brain's going to take that and give you energy again because it's like, oh, we can safely do this and that, right? So that's a little side tangent about my own theory about a lot of this stuff. Um, and obviously, nutrition is super important, but a lot of it is just having fucking calories, okay? Now, state-dependent memory, what happens? What will happen is your brain will basically take a snapshot of one of these areas and it's going to extrapolate it to the fucking future forever. And when you're in these little boxes right here, you cannot fathom the other box, right? How many times, right? It's the meme, right? Oh my God, it's so over. Oh my God, we're so back. This is what's happening. This is state dependent memory. Because when you're in a low, you, your brain literally can't fathom ever feeling fucking good again. Your brain can't fathom the sun shining again. Your brain can't fathom that, you know, the clouds come out and everything that you do feels effortless and it's amazing and, uh, you know, that you had the energy to do it and all this different stuff, right? Conversely, when you're at a high, you can't really fathom not being at the high. You're like, man, everything's aligned. I feel super on point. I feel like I have a bunch of internal integrity, meaning you uh, you're feel aligned and whole and that you can do whatever you want to do. You feel fucking powerful, right? And you waver between these. Sometimes you feel powerful. Sometimes you don't feel fucking powerful. And that's fucking life, right? Now, the reason state-dependent memory is so important is because when you're in these fucking lows, you have to remember that your brain is basically playing a trick on you. Your brain is saying, hey, bro, look, Right now, you think it will never get better. Right now, you think that it will never get easier. Right now, you think that it will never be easy. You'll never get anything that you want. Everything you're going to do is going to fail forever. And the sun's never going to come out again. You have to fucking realize this shit is a fucking lie. Your state-dependent memory is essentially taking control of your psyche. And it's blocking out all positive things. Everything positive is getting blocked out, right? And what you have to remember as well is you might just need some fucking food. When this happens, when I get state-dependent memory in the negative, the first thing my mind goes to, because I'm aware of this, is, man, I should eat something, right? And people think that's too simple. It's not too simple. Your brain is, is its whole goal is for you to have enough fucking calories, because if you don't eat enough food, you are going to die. I think people don't understand how many emotional problems get fixed when you eat actual food, when you eat some carbohydrates, right? When you eat a little sugar. Which is my theory on why the whole peating thing I think is only semi-true, okay? I could be wrong. This is my own observation through my own life, all right? Now, if you can realize that this is happening to you when you're in these fucking lows, 
then you understand the game is basically waiting it out because you know the high is going to come back, right? You know the high is going to fucking come back. And so you don't fight it. You're just like, man, this shit really sucks. I feel like a piece of shit right now. I don't feel good. I'm just going to fucking chill and just wait this out. And then ironically, what happens is when you kind of let go of fighting the low, when you let the low flow, little clouds start coming back, right? Little things start coming back and little energy, you know, you get more energy. Now, an additional theory I have is I think when you're in a low, what happens is your brain, right? You, when people try to get out of the low in their head, they're like, oh my God, it's going to be so much energy and so much effort to get out of this low. So ironically, when they think that about the low, again, the body is estimating how many calories you're expending. So when you're like, oh, I got to get out of the fucking low and you really gas pedal trying to do that in your head, you're perceiving it as a huge caloric expenditure, which again, if you perceive anything like that, your brain is going to fucking gas pedal. It's going to suppress your energy because it's going to be like, man, let's not do that. Right. Your brain doesn't want you to, to spend a bunch of energy if you don't have to. Right. And it knows you're not getting chased by a fucking lion which is why controlling your environment is so important, right? So there's a mechanism in your brain that is anticipating how many calories you need to expend. And the way that you trick it is you essentially don't make a big fucking deal about the thing. And ironically, you not making a big deal about it unlocks these fucking whatever suppression mechanism is happening. And then the clouds begin to shine again, okay? This is a very gentle approach to getting out of these fucking lows. You basically accept it, realize you're trapped in a little state-dependent memory box. You might need some fucking orange juice. You might need a fucking apple, right? And then you just chill the fuck out, and then the sun comes up again, right? And then when you're over here, your brain's going to be like, man, I can't even fathom being fucking, uh, you know, freaking out again. What was I even worried about? That was, we're, we're so back, right? We're so back. So this idea and these ideas coming together is how you can get yourself out of a lot of lows. And when I say get yourself out is essentially waiting, recognizing that you're fighting it, fucking accepting it and just waiting for the fucking dub to come back into your life because the sun's going to shine again. You're going to feel aligned. You're going to feel like everything is effortless, right? You felt these before you probably swing. I used to swing in these two fucking States like 300 times a day until I realized, wait a second, Every time I'm up here and I have a super high, I'm desperately clawing to keep this. And every time I'm, I'm at a super low, I'm desperately trying to get out of this, right? And this fucking fight I was doing every single day emotionally was ironically making these things way worse than they had to be. When I got to a high and I instead changed my relationship from, oh, I got to keep it, right? Oh, oh, I got to keep it. When I, when I went from that to more of like, a, oh, hello, my good friend, let's have a fucking morning. Right. And then when I was in a low from like, oh, fuck, I got to get out. Oh, I got to get out. So like, oh, we're in a low. Let's go do something else. When you have a softer relationship with these two polar opposites, you kind of sit more in the middle. Right. You kind of get more laid out. So then or more regulated out. So these swings get less intense. OK, every yin has a yang. So I don't know if this helped. Here's a couple ideas I just kicked on in the morning. If you uh, have any questions, fucking comment them. Hope you uh, hope you liked it. Peace.